Mark is going to start his uh, ham hock and split pea soup. So here's the ham hock defrosted, and I'm going to let Mark carry on. Okay, as you can see, the supermarket has always been already been kind enough to cut through the bone with a bandsaw for me. We're using olive oil today, but you could also use vegetable oil if you prefer. Not everyone has olive oil in their kitchen, but we tend to have it all the time, so it's what gets used. Okay, we got those in there. I'm going to put this on a kind of a medium-low heat. Let them set. Cook the outsides a bit. Okay, so we've kind of browned most of the outside of this. So now it's time to cut them apart. Once again, we come from different backgrounds, and this is not something I would know how to make. Yes, but all Canadians know how to make <laughs> pea soup and drink beer. <laughs> I hate to say it, but yeah. <laughs> yes, and with us, it's pasta and wine. Well, most of the time, yeah. I've grown to love pasta. Okay, those guys are out. These guys are going back in. And now for some chicken stock. Oh, lots of that around. And Tony cans this in the one pint jars. Well, that's so, the way we use it most of the time. Yep. We're going to start off with, and we're going to mix this 50 50 with water. So. Now there's a pint of water going in. And we're just going to leave this for, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And uh, let some of the flavor get into the, from the uh, pork, get into the broth. And that's going to be the base of our soup. Cool. simmering for a couple of hours now, about two hours, and yeah, it's tender. So now it's coming out of this pot, going into a dish, and we're going to let it cool for, I don't know, 15 minutes maybe, and well, until it's cool. At which point we remove the rind and the bone, and we... Oh, yeah, this stuff's falling apart already. Yeah, we remove the rind and the bone, I'm going to try deep frying this some rind later for a <laughs> quick snack. See what it's like. I've never had uh, fried pork rind after it's been boiled for a couple hours, but it may be okay. Who knows? But I learned how to cook by experimenting, so <laughs> this stuff's new to me. Another pint of chicken stock. Another pint of water. About five minced... Uh, Cloves of garlic. <laughs> You've always been heavy on the garlic, Mark. But that's okay. Well, I could have put five buds in, but I don't think you would have liked the soup. Um, this is about kind of a medium large sized carrot. A stalk of celery. And a medium onion. All chopped up. And that's just going to go in, and we'll let that cook for a little while. Um, oh, we prepare the beans, and for the beans, they're dried and in a package, but they're store-bought, so they're going to go into a strainer and get rinsed, and we check for pebbles and things like that while we're rinsing them. We've got about two pounds of peas here. Give that a stir. And I'm also going to add a tablespoon of parsley, dried parsley, mostly because we don't have any fresh parsley. But. 
Yes, but, we've that, all, but, we've always but that one came parsley. from my garden from last year, Mark. Yeah, okay. The, the store-bought one is in the larger container. Mm-hmm, okay. Just give that another stir. Get Looking these good. guys down off the rim. Turn up the heat slightly to get it back up to a simmer, and we're going to leave it alone for about an hour or so. So now what we're doing is removing the bone and the pork rind. <laughs> Your favorite part, eh? What are you going to do with that? Cut it up and... Uh, I'm going to deep fry it and see what it tastes like, yeah. Okay. See what the deep fry later. I don't know how you like the rind. I don't know. You and, oh, my, it's, you, it's you just, and my mother. It's so she, tasty. You know? I think my mother used to always like that, too. She obviously had good taste. <laughs> few hours cooking this soup and yeah you're right it's starting to stick just a bit but now it's time to put in the meat and let me just get over there I'll pop this stuff back in the meat by the way is entirely fully cooked we cooked it for like a couple hours already and by the way the pork rind I did throw it in the deep fryer and it's actually better than I thought it would be. Uh, I, I've had pork rinds in the past, but I never had them when they were boiled for a couple of hours. And I Like think, I said, I thought it's better than I thought it would be. Okay, I think we're having this for dinner tonight and we'll put the roast away. Yep, no good point, idea. No point in trying to cook two meals. No, I've, I've cooked enough for one day. And if there <laughs> is any leftover, we'll can it up. And if Oh not, yeah, we're going to have leftovers. Not, okay. Well, if there's enough to can up, we will. Otherwise, it'll go in the fridge. Sounds good to me. Does it? Yep. Okay. Thanks so much, Mark. Yeah, quite any time. Okay. Well, almost every it's day. It's almost dinner time anyway. <laughs> oh, it is, yeah. Do you want to uh, some bread food. taken out of the... Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's get some of your bread out. Yeah. Okay. And, Sounds good. And uh, we'll have some bread with us, and that will be a hearty meal. And it's only around 70 degrees where we are, uh, so we can get away with having this for dinner tonight. Uh, but... Typically, this is one of your fall or winter or early spring stick-to-your-ribs kind of meals. Sounds good. Thanks, Thank Mark. You. Take care.